Please like and subscribe to help my channel grow. Cameron Willingham was found guilty of arson and murder and basically was prosecuted, convicted, and sentenced to death. He was accused of starting a fire in his family home that killed his three children. Throughout the entire ordeal, Mr. Wimmingham continued to proclaim his innocence. It fell upon deaf ears. He filed appeals, he went to advocates, and he couldn't get anyone to believe him. The evidence clearly showed that he was guilty. This all happened in 1991. In 2004, he was executed by lethal injection. Unfortunately, after his death, they went back and decided to look at the evidence. Found out that the evidence had been misinterpreted. Mr. Wimmingham went to his death proclaiming his innocent and Texas actually executed an innocent man. Larry Griffin from the state of Missouri was convicted of murder in 1981 of drug dealer Quentin Moss. Mr. Griffin continued to proclaim that he was innocent over the years. He stated that the prosecutors had it wrong and that the witnesses had identified the wrong person. This fell upon deaf ears. He continued to file pleas with advocacies trying to get his conviction overturned. Ultimately, it fell upon deaf ears. In 1995, Mr. Griffin was injected lethally and he was put to death by the state of Missouri. This man died an innocent man, which they later found out. David Spence from Texas was accused of participating in a murder of three children that were teenagers in 1985. Mr. Spence proclaimed his innocence all along. He said that there was never any evidence against him that said that he was involved. Eyewitnesses that claimed that he was there and also evidence that the police were never able to produce clearly to clearly link him to the crime. Unfortunately, in 1997, Mr. Spence was put to death by lethal injection. He went to his death proclaiming his innocent. After his death, prosecutors did an analysis on his teeth print and found out that they did not match. Jesse Tafario from Florida was convicted in 1976 for killing a state police officer. He was accused of causing the death of an officer. Eventually, he was put on death row. He always proclaimed his innocence. He is being highlighted not because of his innocence or guilt, but because of the malfunctioning in the executioner's chair when he was put to death. Policy makers discuss this, but they continue to this day to electrocute people. Ruben Cantu from San Antonio, Texas was 17 years old when he became the co-defendant in a robbery that turned to homicide. His co-defendant and himself were convicted. He was placed on death row where he continued to fight battles with the prosecutors and the state proclaiming his innocence. Advocates were not able to gain a retrial for him. And 12 years later, he was executed by lethal injection. Unfortunately, 12 years after his death, it was discovered that Mr. Cantu was not only innocent, but he wasn't present during the robbery at all. Michael Hogg Roberts was serving time in the Missouri prison in 1983 when he became a co-defendant in a murder of a correctional officer. During that time, Mr. Roberts proclaimed his innocence and said that he had nothing to do with that. 
He fought in court and he eventually lost and was placed on death row. In 1999, he was executed by lethal injection. Advocates for Mr. Roberts continued the battle and continued to proclaim his innocence long after his death and still to this day continue. An investigation has been conducted that has found that there is no physical evidence that links Mr. Roberts to the crime of murder and his execution. In 1989, Mr. Troy Davis was 20 years old. He was at a Burger King in Savannah, Georgia, where a homeless man was being assaulted. The security guard at the Burger King was an off-duty police officer. When he intervened to help the homeless man and stop the assault, he was shot and killed. Mr. Davis was arrested and charged with murder. The prosecutor was able to find nine witnesses or more to come forward to testify against him. Some of the witnesses claimed to have first-hand account and some of the witnesses claimed to know Mr. Davis on a personal level and claimed that he had given them information about the crime. Advocates for Mr. Davis fought hard and long to try and win his court case. Mr. Davis was subsequently charged with murder and convicted. He was given capital punishment where he received the death penalty. He was executed with a lethal injection. Mr. Davis supporters continued to advocate in hopes of clearing his name even after death. They believe that he is innocent and no evidence has ever been found.